सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली It is generally believed that being in a group is safer when being hunted by predators. We see this all the time in nature, in documentaries and we're familiar with the imagery. A lion chasing a herd of deer for example or dolphins attacking schools of fish. Most of us have seen visuals and other depictions and are familiar with the concept of prey getting together in groups to evade predators. It is widely believed that one of the types of protection that groups offer from hunting predators is something called the confusion effect. When the predator is honing in on one animal, it is thought that they would get confused due to the number of individuals in the group and thus the predator cannot focus on their individual prey. But there hasn't been much evidence of this confusion effect. We don't know that it works at all and many experts think that there in fact isn't any confusion in predators minds at all when they hunt groups because they still end up making kills getting an individual from a group is seemingly not impossible which means that these predators are capable of avoiding this theorized confusion effect so what do they actually do How do they process sensory information in a moving dynamic group and then hone in on just one individual and capture them? To understand this, researchers from Oxford studied how hawks and other raptors or birds of prey hunt swarms of bats in New Mexico. They observed primarily Swainson's hawks hunting a colony of up to 900,000 free-tailed bats. They studied them with an array of cameras to understand if the confusion effect works. and what hawks do to avoid it or what strategy these birds of prey employ for successful kills it turns out hawks hunt bats very much like missiles attack their targets they use navigational geometry that missile guidance systems use and navigators on ships also use to avoid collisions the hawks it turns out have absolutely no confusion at all when they're hunting they know exactly what to do and they plan ahead for the kill The bats involved in this study all move in swarms. They occupy caves in the hundreds of thousands. The researchers estimated that there were 700,000 to 900,000 bats in these caves and they all exited the cave in large numbers at dusk. The researchers observed and recorded the hawks attacking these bats for 21 days using six high definition video cameras that were installed around the cave. These cameras captured the bats emerging from the caves and the hawks swooping in to attack them. The researchers after 21 days analyzed all the recordings and then started tracking hawks and the specific individual bats that they caught or tried to catch over those 21 days. They then went back and recreated the trajectories of the hawk and its specific bat in 3D. In total they reconstructed 62 attacks with both animals confirmed and 26 attacks where the bat that was captured could not be identified. They even did reconstructions for two peregrine falcon and how those birds attacked the bats as well. The analysis showed that there was no closed loop pursuit or targeted attack on a single individual bat who was ultimately captured by the hawk. The hawks are not looking at the swarm of emerging bats, spotting one and then deciding to chase it like lions chase deer. That is not what they're doing. These birds of prey do not pursue individual bats in a swarm. Instead, what these hawks do is they target a fixed point in space that is within the structure of of this moving swarm and fly towards it in a collision course. They display no evidence of confusion or any evidence for targeting individual bats they just approach the swarm at a point in space on it as they come close to the swarm they're flying near parallel to the motion of the swarm itself and the bats that they're appearing to target seem to be on constant bearing the hawk eventually flies almost alongside the swarm and then catches whichever bat is in the position at the time when it finally reaches its target position 
so they have just set their eyes on a spot in the swarm and then they just want to capture whatever bat is present at the spot when they ultimately make contact with this target area. Dense aggregations of individuals in the form of flocks, schools or swarms are widely thought to confuse predators. It is widely believed that when any predator targets a single individual, they would experience a sensory overload due to the overwhelming number of individuals in this moving and dynamic group. Therefore, they experience the confusion effect. And that was the hypothesis that we were living with, although the evidence for this confusion effect has been scant. It has been unclear which predators experience the confusion effect, especially when they are visual hunters like birds of prey are. The animals that hunt visually can focus from a distance. Do they get confused? It doesn't appear so. Even the nature of protection accorded by groups to individuals, often called the selfish herd theory, where individuals seek to be in the middle of a group, is unclear in situations where predators can attack in three dimensions, that is from above and below, such as in water or air. We can imagine that if there is a herd of deer or wildebeest and lions are chasing them, the ones in the middle of the herd are probably more protected. But when it comes to schools of fish or swarms of bats or flocks of birds that are flying, they can be attacked from all directions, including from above and below. Some studies in the late 80s and early 90s concluded that the confusion effect probably could work and was maybe working for numbers where considering individual closed loop target attacks is feasible for predators. So a group made up of two to about seven individuals is thought to be about the right number for any confusion effect to take place for a predator who switches between these specific individuals that it wants to pick and kill. And it is thought that beyond seven members in a group of prey, confusion effect might not apply at all. And this new study only proves this. As the hawk flies, preparing to attack, focusing on a point within the structure of the swarm, it flies almost near parallel to its prey, maintaining a line of sight. The hawk focuses towards the point in the swarm and flies on a collision course with it. The prey in the position that they are targeting will then, to them, appear to be on a constant bearing. Constant bearing is a navigational term that essentially indicates a steady relative position of one object with respect to another. If I am on a ship, and I look out the window and I see another ship out my window at a specific position and even as my ship continues moving, the other ship continues staying in the same position on my window, I know that the other ship is on a collision course towards my ship unless it is moving exactly parallelly. This can be visualized easily by imagining two arms of a triangle. The two arms are the paths taken by two ships and unless they are exactly parallel, they are on a collision course with decreasing range or decreasing distance between them. That is the only way they can be in the same relative position to one another even though both of them are actually moving. The line of sight between the ships remains constant but the distance between them decreases. In navigation, this is called constant bearing decreasing range or CBDR. And the physics of this navigation is what the hawks utilize as well. The hawk's path seems to be solely based on where the target would be at the final position of the kill rather than the instantaneous positions during the flights. The hawks, when they're swimming towards the swarms, are not adjusting their position in accordance with the individual bat that they capture and instead they tailor their movements towards the final position where the bat would be when they capture it. The researchers confirmed this by examining data on other birds of prey that have attacked singleton targets or lone targets. These birds tracked their single prey by modifying their trajectories according to the prey's instantaneous locations. So it was an individual one-on-one -on -one chase, unlike these hawks that tailor their flight depending on the bat's final position. These graphs from the paper show how the hawks also maintain a line of sight with the bat the whole time. These are the 3D recreations of the hawk and bat paths taken from 15 successful captures and kills. 
The plots show how the Hawks maintained a near parallel line of sight with the swarm until successful capture. In these plots, for each kill, the magenta dots indicate the trajectory or path taken by the bat that ends up dying. The dark blue dots show the path taken by the hawk that is hunting these that captures this bat. Orange starburst shows the point of capture and blue lines indicate the line of sight from hawk to bat. Orange lines are simulated trajectories. The study adds some compelling evidence to show that the confusion effect is not really a type of protection that comes to play in large and dense aggregations of animals. Instead, predators that hunt large groups use navigational geometry to increase their chances of a kill. While sailors avoid CBDR situations and collisions, torpedoes attacking underwater utilize it for the kill just like these hawks do with these bats. <laughs>